Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Vintage Cube Draft. Uh, today, I'm not sure what we'll be doing exactly. We've got a few options for picks. We could take a look at Caracas. There's a Mana Vault. Mana Vault's broken fast mana. There's a Counter Spell and a Force of Will in this pack, though generally if you pass one, people are going to think blue's open. I kind of have a desire to stay out of blue a little bit. Uh, mana Vault is, is fast mana. It's some of the weirder fast mana. Um, in that it accelerates you more than Soul Ring, but then you have to start paying to untap it or you take damage. Um, I think it's the pick that keeps us the most open out of all of these, other than like maybe Caracas, which you could play in any slower deck. But uh, I'm going to take Mana Vault. All right. <laughs> okay, in this pack there is a Llanowar Elves, a Grim Monolith, a Wheel of Fortune, an Emrakul, a Repeal. Um, I have been really enjoying the like artifact ramp strategies uh lately the last one was maybe a little bit too spicy i'll admit um but i think i'm gonna take the grim monolith and we'll see what happens all right there's a show and tell there's a Raphelos. i could take Raphelos and we could try and do mono green ramp and then if like emmercool and stuff comes around we can ramp into emmercool um but i think i'm just gonna take the signet and maybe try to do like artifacty stuff all right in this pack there's a birds of paradise there's a Mana Flare, uh, there's a Waterlogged Grove. Waterlogged Grove would help if we find, like, an Upheaval or a Tinker. Um, it, it's not a Forest for Raphelos, and it's not an Island for High Tide, of course. Um, hmm. The other option is, like, a Random Savannah. I think I'm going to take the Birds and, and kind of speculate on that for a bit. We'll see what happens here. So there's a Lodestone Golem or a Findhorn Elves. We did pass quite a bit of good green stuff with Raphelos. Um, and the dorks are really only good if you're doing upheaval specifically, if you're, like, trying to do turbo upheaval. Whereas, like, turn one lodestone golem off, to, off of Mana Vault Grim Monolith is pretty good. Uh, same, like, if we get a mox, we can mox land Mana Vault lodestone golem. So I think I'm gonna take the golem. More dorks are coming around. There's a memory jar, which is also good. Draw sevens are powerful with, um, a bunch of artifact ramp. And a Noble Hierarch. There's also a Crucible of Worlds, but um, we don't have any of the land stuff. Although if we take Crucible and we play it early, we could like get a bunch of fetches and start um, thinning our deck, playing lands every turn, uh, getting some card advantage that way. I think I'm going to take Memory Jar. Okay, there's Thousand Year Storm, there's Braids. We could try and take Braids and do... Uh, like, we get Braids, get Smokestack, and then do, like, Artifact Ramp into Braids. We do have a Black Signet. Otherwise, there's Duretti. And Duretti is really good in the Artifact stack, of course, but it's also kind of boring. And I know I just said I drafted a deck that was too spicy, but, like, Hangerback Walker is probably just better than what I'm doing here, but... You know what? I want to take Braids. We'll see what we can find and uh, what we'll be able to play. Uh, there's an Elvish Mystic. Uh, Jokel Hops, probably not playing Jokel Hops. I've yet to see anyone play this card, um, though I'm sure when it happens, I will be quite surprised. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the Dork. If green's open, we can start playing green stuff on top of this. Um, I like green Sun Zenith quite a bit, especially with this much artifact ramp. Uh, we can sack green Dorks to Braids. There's a Vraska... And Vraska is pretty strong, especially if we can accelerate into her, but Green Sun Zenith is just like, go get any good creature you have that's green. Because it has to be specifically a green creature with mana value X or less. So, Acidic Slime would be good. I think I'm just going to take the Dork. If we can have consistent early acceleration into an Upheaval or a Draw 7 or a Braids, we're probably alright. Because, like, if your opponent just goes, like, land pass, and your turn one is, like, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith, Smokestack off a of land, they're going to be sad, because then they're going to have to sack a land every turn, and then they're not going to go anywhere. Same with Braids, of course. <clears throat> and Birds of Paradise does fix for any color. Raphelos came around, as did Ramanop Excavator and Terastodon. Um, I'm going to take Raphelos, because we could be pretty close to Mono Green. I did not take Crucible, so if I don't take Romanov Excavator, we can't buy lands out of the grave, but Raphelos is just a lot stronger. Uh, Waterlog Grove does fix if we do end up playing an Upheaval deck. There's a Findhorn Elves or an Endurance. I think I'll just take the Mana Dork, because there's also the chance that we can just, like, 
either green sun out a crater hoof and win, or if we get like a natural order, we can we can go that route. We are playing ramp, so basically, what did we miss out on this pack? We missed out on Big Emrakul, Woodfall Primus, and Terastodon, which are three of the better things to ramp into, but they're still um, Primeval Titan, there's still Crater Hoof we haven't seen, and so we can kind of hope for those. Um, you could ramp into like a Sundering Titan. I guess Whisperwood Elemental is not that uh, not that bad. I could take Wishclaw Talisman, though I think I like this card better in Storm. And there's a makeshift mannequin, so like maybe, possibly, reanimator stuff is open. And we could play like a green-black reanimator deck where you either ramp out an Archon or reanimate it really fast. Like, it's a possibility. Can't believe Rafelos came around. I think we only missed one of the dorks we passed and it was Noble Hierarch. So this is not going to be an Oath of Druids deck, like, almost certainly because we have so many dorks and we passed a bunch of the big green creatures. Um, if we are playing Braids, Inquisition gets really good. It's also, I think, the least likely of these cards that's going to wheel. We could take Vampiric Tutor or, like, a Zyatora's Proving Grounds for fixing, or Bayou, of course. Um, Bayou would be great if we are going to play Black. Uh, I think Eternal Witness is more likely to wheel, but we could also just play Eternal Witness and, like, buy back stuff that we lose, or... I think I'm going to go with the Inquisition, though. Inquisition seems pretty good. There's Grizzlebrand. Um, maybe Devoted Druid. I'm kind of hesitant, because, like, Grizzlebrand's not a... It's not a green creature. I can't green suns it. But I can green suns Rafelos, and then just have, like, a lot of mana. Um, or I can take Devoted Druid, which is just more ramp. But that's all we have at the moment, is just ramp. I'll take Grizzlebrand just to have maybe something to ramp into. Okay, this makes me feel a little bit better. There's Opposition, or Ulamog. We did miss one big Eldrazi, but this could be an Opposition deck. Because, like, Opposition Braids would be really powerful. Um, and Opposition Upheaval would be really strong, too. There's only one Opposition. There's at least one more Eldrazi, so I'm going to take the Opposition. We do have Waterlogged Grove to help with that. Okay, in this pack there is a Necromancy. There's a Bone Shredder. Let's see, a Tangle Wire if we want to do Staxy stuff. Which, we, we, we have Opposition, and we are going to be playing a bunch of stuff on board, so this can slow an opponent down. Um, other than that, there's a Mirari's Wake, which would not be bad. So it's not really a Mentor deck, I don't think. Uh, this could be a Metalworker deck, but we already have so much ramp. I think we take Deranged Hermit, because if we get Hoof, that's that's a way to win. Uh, Toski wouldn't be bad. Uh, Mind's Desire is kind of funny. This isn't really a pod deck. We have no three drops. Uh, speaking of, there's Rex Sage. We do have Green Sun for Rex Sage for interaction. Pod might go late enough we can pick it up, but I, I really doubt this is going to be a pod deck. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Rex Age. Okay, there's a Garrick Wild Speaker, which is an overrun effect, so like that's a way we can kill with our dorks. We don't have any broken lands to untap. There's a Divining Top to like maybe help smooth out our draws. Uh, we will have the mana to activate top a lot, but I think I take Garrick. I'm kinda I think we're putting the black cards in a maybe pile here, because Braids Braids with a ton of stuff to sack is always generally really good. Especially if you're accelerating into her, but like this is a really black, or a really heavy black uh, color requirement. Now, Leovold is interesting because we're considering playing blue and we're also considering playing black. So if our fixing turns out good enough, Leovold is just really strong. Um, we have birds and we have Golgari Signet. I think I'm going to take a Leovold over a Questing Beast. Um, Questing Beast is really strong. There's just a wall of keywords on that card, but Leovold's kind of busted, so we'll take Leovold. Uh, Forge Master, we could tinker. We don't have a ton of artifacts, though. We just have, like, some random artifact acceleration. I think I'm going to take Scavenging Ooze. Having, like, random Grave Hate is just good. This is a Jund-colored Tri-Land. Still not really an Oath deck. I mean, like, we could Oath into Grizzlebrand, but I'd have to, like, cut all the cards I have <laughs> that are creatures, which is 90% of them. Uh, and then Opposition wouldn't be good, so I'm going to take Eternal Witness. Let's see, Temple Ground does not, or Temple Card, Temple Garden does not fix for us. So I think I'm going to take a random Sword. Um, if we're forcing our opponent to 
sack stuff with braids or we're like oppositioning them us getting extra mana is pretty big forcing them to discard is kind of nice too um it's not a croxa deck this might be an ancestral visions deck maybe uh maybe could be a woe strider deck as well i'm gonna take ancestral visions um yeah we'll take a tangle wire i think Okay, Mind's Desire. Uh, I don't think we're playing Mind's Desire, but I'm not playing those other cards either. Um, double Black on Bloodgast would be really good with Braids now that I think about it, but I don't have any fetch lands or like um, additional landfall triggers. Maybe I should have taken Bloodgast. Kind of dismissed it too quickly. Okay, so we've got some options. There's a Black Signet, but it's uh, Black, White, and we're going to be Sultai. Uh, Ashiok is kind of busted. We can't really accelerate into Ashiok, but I was just complaining about, like, how good this card seems to be every single time it's ever been cast, ever. Um, and if we just, like, play a dork off of, uh, a duel and then cast Ashiok on turn two, that's pretty good. So, I'm gonna take Ashiok. Okay, there's a Zagoth Triome, so that's the Sultai Triome, which would help fix our mana. It's kind of unfortunate because we don't have any fetches yet. Uh, Courser would be really nice, but I think if Rafelos is wheeling, Courser's probably wheeling. And I really, really would like some fixing. Hopefully we find an Upheaval. So there's a Thought Seize, there's a Nyssa. Plow Under is really funny. Um, and really cruel <laughs> with this deck. Could you imagine Plow Under into Braids? <laughs> like, it's just... Oh, that's so mean. Plow Under almost certainly will wheel, though. I think I'm gonna take the Prismatic Vista. Um, it's just really good fixing for basically any deck ever. So we're gonna take it. Uh, Knight of the Reliquary. This might be a deck that wants Knight of the Reliquary, but we don't really have any way to play it because we're not playing white. You can always take Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce is a decent interactive spell. Um, I could take Warren Power Stone. Survival of the Fittest could help us tutor for a specific creature. Um... And if we pick up, like, a late reanimation spell, maybe it's good. Murderous Rider. Um, Murderous Rider's pretty good. I think I'm going to take Survival. Okay, there's Steve. There's a Blooming Marsh. Or Garrick Relentless. Or Ophiomancer. Ophiomancer Braids is a combo. Um, hmm. I think in, to even just play Braids, I'm going to need Blooming Marsh. Okay, if we're playing a really heavy black deck and we're playing Braids and Inquisition. We might not actually play... No, we, we'll, we're going to try and play Opposition. Otherwise, Hydroid Crisis is pretty good here. Um, Hydroid Crisis being a cast trigger is pretty pretty insane. Um, but it's also like a mana outlet. It's kind of a way to win. We don't really have one of those except maybe Grizzlebrand, but we have to get pretty large on the mana curve to get there because we're not cheating him out. Yeah, we'll take Hydroid Crisis over Him to Turok. Him to Turok's pretty busted, but I think this will work out better. This is a relatively decent Skull Clamp deck because we have like five different creatures we can sack. Actually, more than that because like Eternal Witness and Deranged Termit. So I'll take Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp's fun. There is a Magus of the Order, but we have no big green creature to use with it, so this card is just like atrociously bad for us. Uh, we have no, we have Prismatic Vista, but I, this is not really a good Renin Six deck, I don't think. Um, Dark Ritual could help us play, like, a Lodestone Golem, <laughs> or a Braids, I suppose. Otherwise, there's Ravenous Chupacabra. I, I think I'm going to take the Chupacabra just because it's, like, interaction. <laughs> okay, let's come around. There's Elvish Reclaimer. Elvish Reclaimer is not sackable to Skull Clamp, but it can fix for us by going and getting Zagoth Triome, which is pretty big. Toxic Deluge is going to be bad because we're playing so many dudes. Infernal Grasp is not bad removal. I don't really have a lot of removal. That's true. I should probably take this as removal. Uh, I'm going to take the Elvish Reclaimer. I'm, I'm going to regret not having removal, but I'm going to take the Elvish Reclaimer. Um, so, Gilded Lotus versus Thrawn Dynamo. Because I have some pretty heavy color requirements, I'm actually going to take Gilded Lotus. I do not like Pelucranos. I know, like, we're not... I don't know that we're that heavy of a ramp deck. Kind of just have, like, some decent mana rocks. Plow Under or Kogla? Um, I guess we can, like, Green Sun Zenith Kogla to have removal. 
But I really want to play Plow Under in a deck, so I'm taking Plow Under. Uh, I guess this might be a Worn Power Stone deck more than a Wrath of God deck. Uh, this is probably not an Armageddon deck, nor is it a Mutavolt deck. So I'm going to take Sower, but I'm probably not playing Sower. Take a random Oblivion Stone. And then we can put a Scrap Heap Scrounder in the sideboard. So we don't have as much fixing as I would like to actually support a three-color deck. But Opposition and Hydroid Crisis are too good not to run. I can probably cut Sower. I'm glad I took the fixing here. Even though Ophiomancer would have been sweet. Much sweeter than Blooming Marsh. Um, Survival of the Fittest. It does let us turn random dorks into, like, Braids, Chupacabra, Whisperwood Elemental in the late game. So I think it's worth it even though we're not going to be reanimating stuff. It uh, Reclamation Sage is just generally good in this format because destroying artifacts and enchantments is really powerful. This is not really a memory jar deck, I don't think. I guess it can be because we have Leovold, but like we could just play Ramp, Memory Jar, and then try and cast a bunch of stuff. But like the problem is with the color requirements, if we can't actually cast the seven cards that we draw, we just kind of waste them. Um, Scavenging Ooze, I might actually make a sideboard card. Uh, I don't think we need Worn Power Stone. I think Grim Monolith Mana Vault's probably enough, especially with Golgari Signet as fixing. Um, Sword of Feast and Famine, I think we'll bring in against specifically a green or black deck. Lodestone Golem, we can't tutor for other than Survival of the Fittest. It is something we can always cast off Mana Acceleration, but I think I would bring it in versus Storm. Um, our early game is exclusively green, which is nice. I wish we had an Elves of Deep Shadow. Uh, the Noble Hierarch would have been more important than one of these dorks, but I don't remember what I took over Noble Hierarch. I think I was taking something, either a mana rock or something speculatively, I don't remember, but I wasn't trying to go green. I really want to see how green decks do that are not just mono green ramp, because you can play mono green ramp anytime, um, and I think it's boring and a little underpowered. Just personal opinion. But, let's see, I need to cut three cards. I could cut Reclaimer. It's not like we have... I think I, think I am going to cut Reclaimer, because it's not good with Skull Clamp, it's kind of a terrible top deck. We only have one fetch, and we're not, like, going and getting Gaia's Cradle. If I had Gaia's Cradle, I think it would be worth it. Uh, we're going to be mostly Forests because of Rafelos, and we're going to try and Rafelos, I guess. Actually, there's a question. Do we need to be casting stuff off of Rafelos? We kind of top out at five, but I mean, like, if you can cast a Plow Under on turn three or whatever, it's probably pretty good. <laughs> Um, and you, you like, there's always the mana dump of Hydroid Crisis, right? So I think I think it's actually worth it. Um, I really like Inquisition as just like interaction. Oh, man, I don't know what two cards to cut. So Green Sun can get any green creature that does include Leovold. That's something they may not expect if they see like this as the start. How many car? How how often are we actually drawing cards? So like Leovold might draw a card. Crisis draws cards. I may not need Survival of the Fittest. It might just be better for Reanimator. It's a great card. There's a reason this is banned in some places. Um, and I need to cut one more card, and it probably shouldn't be a creature. Um, maybe it's Garrick? Garrick seems good, though. Hmm. I think the deck looks like this. Let's see what it wants to add. Two swamps. Okay, lots of forests. That seems good. We have one... Two, three, four, five black sources. Six if you count birds, which I think you do. Seven with Signet. Eight with Gilded Lotus. Um, that seems pretty decent. We have a lot of green sources, which is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue sources. And we don't need blue until the late game, really, except other than Ashiok and Leovold. And we can cheat those out in other ways. Yeah, you know... Let's do it. I'll see you guys in round one. Oh, and of course we're drawing cards. We're playing Skull Clamp. I was like, yeah, you know, the tutor is good if we're not drawing that many cards. And we have Skull Clamp in the deck, so. Alrighty, we're on the play for round one. And uh, we maybe can Inquisition into a big Hydroid Crisis, so I think this is worth it. If you can Inquisition before your opponent even gets to play, sometimes people will keep hands based solely on, like, a Black Lotus or a Soul Ring or... Things like that, and Inquisition can really mess some people up in cube for that reason. Same with Thoughtseize. More so even with Thoughtseize. 
So we're going to immediately fire off this Inquisition of Kozilek. Vampiric Tutor and the Reality Chip. I will take Vampiric Tutor. Because, like, now my opponent's hand doesn't really do anything until they, like, equip Reality Chip to something. Uh, we draw Eternal Witness, so we can Eternal Witness back uh, Inquisition of Kozilek and get him again, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, opponent plays an island. Plays the Reality Chip. We untap. We draw Opposition, so play a Forest. Play Eternal Witness. Uh, I guess I do want the fifth land. Yeah, we'll take Inquisition again. Pass the turn. If we draw an island off the top, we can oppo start oppositioning, but... Okay, opponent plays a Swamp, which is a card we don't know about. And they also played Frexian Revoker, which is a card we don't know about. And they named Grist on a blind name, which honestly is not that bad of a blind name. The likelihood of their fourth card being something that's Inquisitionable is not actually that high. So we're going to Chupacabra the Reality Chip, and then just attack with Eternal Witness. Because we can just win with creature damage, that's a thing that can start happening. Opponent next turn can cycle and make a 2-2 Shark. Okay, they decide to trade, that's fine. That does make our opposition a little bit worse, but not like horrendous or anything. So they play an Island, they play a Signet, okay. We draw an Elvish Mystic, so they can make a 1-1 Shark if they cycle. We're going to go ahead and attack for two. And we can either Inquisition Elvis Mystic or just, like, cast a Krasis. I think we want to cast a Krasis after Inquisitioning again. It's likely we're not going to be able to take anything here, but uh, opponent knew we picked it up. They cast a Signet. They had more mana than they would need uh, to cast a three-drop or less. So they have a Sower of Temptation. That's the only card we don't know about. I guess that means if I play Mystic, they're just going to take it. Um... Yeah, we'll play Mystic. If they take Mystic over Ravenous Chupacabra, that's fine. It means we have to be a little bit careful if we're going to cast a big Hydroid Crisis, uh, simply because they could then just take it. I mean, if we draw another blue source or we actually resolve this Gilded Lotus, then we can opposition, and anything they take, we could continually tap. It wouldn't be a problem. We're trying to get greedy with this Krasis. The good news is if Krasis, like, were to get countered, we'd still draw the cards, because for some reason this is a non-Eldrazi cr creature with a cast trigger, but, you know. I'm not gonna complain or nothing. Okay, we do draw an island, that's good. So we play an island. Play a Gilded Lotus. Um, they could have a daze or a counter spell, but we're going to be efficient with our mana usage because we want to dump everything into that crisis. Okay. Opposition resolves. Opponent's probably just going to make a big shark. Yep. Okay, opponent makes a 4-4. They draw a card. They untap. I can't cut them off of any mana, so I'll just tap the shark before combat. They'll play a Sower. Oh, maybe not. Tezzeret the Seeker. Okay. I don't know if Pithing Needle's in or not, but I'm going to do this now. Soul Ring. Okay. That's pretty decent. And opponent's going to cast a Sower of Temptation. Uh, that's good for us, because it lets us cast out huge Krasis. Um, and that's mana positive, so we just play it. Blue, blue, green... Black, whatever, lots of mana. Okay. X8. Draw four cards. Gain life. Play a Blooming Marsh and pass the turn. So opponent's going to have a bajillion mana because they can untap Soul Ring with Tezzeret. Fact or fiction? Okay. Um, Duress does almost nothing to this hand. Us not having a Mana Vault is fine. Uh, they can delve a dig through time. Consecrated Sphinx is sort of a problem, but they it gets sort of countered by Leovold. Uh, they would have enough flying power and toughness to actually deal with it, though. So let's see. I think we do something like this. An opponent's going to be like, why is he putting so much in the Consecrated Sphinx pile? Yeah, I think that's fine. Because Mesmeric Fiend is something we can't actually answer that well, and it could take us off of Leovold. 
Whereas Whisperwood Elemental is going to start, like, making tons of tokens, and we're just going to, like, tap all of their permanents forever. Mmm, they took the pile of two. Yep, okay. So we split them correctly, at least a correct way. So opponent recognizes that we have some creature threat that we wanted to protect. And they took Whisperwood Elemental without a second thought. Okay, they untap their uh, lands. So they can dig through time here. Okay, there's the dig through time. Opponent overtapped for it, I think. And they play a Teferi Time Raveler. I mean, they can bounce Krasis, and then I'm just going to draw more cards. <laughs> okay, sure. I should have actually tapped the shark with it in response, so I took four damage. I don't need to. Inquisition. They take the Krasis. Sad times. Okay, we're going to take four. Not sure why opponent didn't swing more there, but... We draw birds. Play Leovold. Play birds. Pass the turn. So we're going to, I think we have to start tapping some creatures here. They uptick to fairy. They play a land. And if they sack silent clearing, that's funny because they can't uh, draw any cards from it. So let's go ahead and uh, tap the shark and the sower. Okay, opponent upticks to fairy to five. We are going to untap mana vault, or I mean uh, grim monolith, excuse me. We untap, we draw Golgari Signet. That's not what I wanted. Um, play Signet. So opponent knows our hand. I could attack Teferi with Leovold. They would have to double block, but that would give me back Whisperwood Elemental. Should have done that before um, playing that Mana Rock. Actually, it doesn't really matter because I can't have an instant speed combat trick because of Teferi. Okay. Tap Creeping Tar Pit. They sack Silent Clearing. They do get to draw a card. I mean, if they give us Whisperwood Elemental, we will very quickly start tapping down every single thing they have. So I think the double block there, even to get rid of Leovold, is actually pretty unappealing. Especially because this creates token, or this creates, yeah, the token creatures on end step. Okay, opponent goes for it. So they either drew something that makes this okay, or they really want Leovold off the table. Say any order for stuff to go into the grave. We draw Whisperwood Elemental. Cast a Whisperwood Elemental. If they drew, like, Counterspell, that would be absolutely backbreaking. Cryptic. Mystic Confluence. Counter, counter, counter. Oh, if I had played the Mana Vault! Oh, I didn't play around Triple Mana Leak! <laughs> oh, if I'd played the Mana Vault, that would have worked. Because we could pay three, then pay three, and then we have one, which we could have turned into three. Oh, that's so brutal! <sighs> Sad time. Alright. That is unfortunate. Okay. Opponent upticks to fairy to three. They cast a Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Now, it's a good thing opposition can tap that. Tap the shark token. We take five. We're just not drawing anything. So pass the turn. Okay, opponent animates a creeping tar pit. They alt Tezzeret. They uptick to fairy to four. So we tap. Oh, Sphinx actually decreased in size because of Tezzeret's ult. That's kind of funny. Uh, tap there. And tap there. Is that lethal? It's a lot of damage. I think it might be exactly lethal. It is. All right, well, I only had one major punt there. Versus opponent's blue-white-black deck. Do I want Sword? Maybe. Sword might actually be pretty decent against them. They look like they have Tinker. I think I'm going to run it back. We just need something that's a little bit faster. So we're looking for acceleration into something as opposed to just like Inquisition slow them down. Because they're already kind of slow. We just need to do something quickly. 
All right, we are on the play for round two. Um, man, if only we drew like a swamp off the top, if we could guarantee it, we could play Ashiok and Leovold. Um, I think we have to mulligan that. We need to do something and quickly. Okay, this does get us to Ashiok and Leovold because we can pick Prismatic Vista back up, just not quickly. So I'm gonna put back Grim Monolith. We will start Forest into Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp and passes. We draw another Forest. So play Prismatic Vista Fetch. Get a Swamp. Eternal Witness. Pick up Prismatic Vista. And then I think if my opponent taps out of Counter Magic, um, I'm playing Ashiok first. Mesmeric Fiend. I'm playing whatever they leave me. Take Leovold. Okay. We untap and draw Golgari Signet. So play Prismatic Vista. Fetch. Get an island. Play Golgari Signet. Play Ashiok. Pray for no days. Get no days. Uptick. And pass the turn. So we are just going to be upticking this Ashiok as fast as possible. <laughs> Uh, opponent does have a creeping tar pit, so we do need to pressure their mana somehow. We get a waterlogged grove. Uptick on our opponent again. Uh, we hit Chrome Mox, Duress, Dig Through Time. Go to combat. Attack for two. Okay, opponent goes down to 18. Play waterlogged grove. Pass the turn. I don't really want to sack waterlogged grove because um, this is this could be like Murderous Rider for a swift end or something. Um, but I don't really want to sack Waterlogged Grove because I don't want to give up double blue. I will if they end up killing Ashiok because I'll, I'll need to draw something else. Okay, they lose two life from Vampiric Tutor. They untap. They play Prismatic Vista. They go to combat. And they pass. They crack Prismatic Vista, second main phase. For a Plains. And play Frexian Revoker, naming Ashiok. Okay, uh, is an answer to Ashiok. We untap. We draw opposition. All right. Well, I'm glad I didn't sack Waterlogged Grove. Uh, play a forest to play around Mana Leak. Blue, blue, whatever, whatever. Opposition. Okay. Pass the turn. Stop on their upkeep. Tap a Plains. Tap Creeping Tar Pit. Ashiok can take a couple of hits from what's on board, no problem. Yep. Okay, we untap. Draw a forest. Cycle Waterlogged Grove into another forest. That's not what I wanted to see. Okay, pass the turn. Tap uh, planes on their upkeep. Opponent plays a swamp. They animate Creeping Tar Pit. So we're going to tap Creeping Tar Pit. Okay, we untap. Oh my gosh! Come on! Ah. <sighs> Yeah, pass the turn. We're not gonna tap anything this time. Put a plays of planes. Plays Tezzeret. Are they gonna down tick for Soul Ring again? Okay. Yep. Tinker. All right. That's scary. <laughs> no, it has Island Walk and Shroud. What are we supposed to do? Uh, untap. Um, uh, yeah, you know, Inquisition. Time Twister? <laughs> oh, that Leovold would have been pretty good, I guess. Yeah. We cannot beat an Inkwell, not in the time limit required. So, Frexian Revoker, really good magic card. And I'll see you guys in round two. Alright, round two. Uh, this is a mulligan. I don't think I can keep seven lands. This, on the other hand, is probably a keep. Um, and I guess I would put back Ravenous Chupacabra. Yeah, let's let's do that. Opponent also mulligan to six. They were debating about keeping six. Okay. Play a forest. Play a birds. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a mountain. Ragavan. Okay. We draw another forest. Play a forest. Play Grim Monolith. Do I block Ragavan with my birds? Uh, I don't 
think so, because next turn I can play Gilded Lotus into opposition and then just keep Raghavan tapped for as long as I have the birds. Opponent plays an island, attacks us for two. Um, although they could have, like, Dak Faden off of a treasure, which would be really bad for the fact that we have a Grim Monolith. You can play Alanoir Elves. They do play Alanoir Elves. And a Young Pyro. Okay. We draw a Whisperwood Elemental. So... Play Gilded Lotus. Because otherwise we're never going to play Gilded Lotus. Then play Whisperwood Elemental. Hopefully they do not have a counterspell for opposition. That would be bad. Uh, we manifest a Memory Jar. That's actually pretty hilarious. Opponent plays a Mountain. Mizium Mortars on the Whisperwood Elemental. Yep. So we'll sack Whisperwood Elemental. So if they kill the birds, we get to manifest again. And we, we would just block whatever they attack with. Okay. Uh, we're going to block Raghavan. We untap. We draw Rexage. Play Opposition. Pass the turn. Cut our opponent off of blue. Okay. They play another island. They play a Mox. Opponents just got all the stuff, huh? Mox Ruby Raghavan seems pretty good. They attack us for four. Sure. Take four, go to ten. I think we will be cycling Waterlogged Grove here. We draw an island. Untap. We get a Deranged Hermit. Alright, Deranged Hermit's pretty good. Play Deranged Hermit. Get a whole bunch of tokens. And pass the turn. Stop on their upkeep, tap them out of blue, and we can tap them out of red too. Okay. Opponent plays an island. Untap. Um, I am going to pay the echo cost, because we need to keep creatures on board. Okay, Elvish Mystic's good, it's another creature. Stop on our opponent's turn. Tap a bunch of stuff. Alright. <laughs> Opponent gets the message and scoops. Cool! We oppositioned somebody. Um, yeah, run it back. Um, we have ramp. If we draw a swamp, we can play braids and that'll be awesome. Um, yeah, we'll keep. Ruffello's kind of looking a little bit too fair of a mana dork there. But it plays a mountain, plays a Beaumont Courier, attacks us for one, we take one, draw Hydroid Crisis. Well, that's something to do if uh, we don't draw a Swamp. I should say, we need a Swamp and we need Braids to survive. Also, if they attack with Beaumont Courier here, we do not block, because um, we need as much mana as we can get, because we have multiple Mana Dorks to cast next turn. Okay, opponent attacks with Beaumont Courier, no blocks. We untap. They're probably just going to port us. Yep. Okay, we draw Skull Clamp. So, play Elvish Mystic. Play Skull Clamp. Pass the turn. So if we want to start cashing in dorks, we can. And I will be wanting to make land drops and... Um, I was, was going to say definitely hit a Swamp, but... They're playing Mishra's Workshop, so this might be some kind of, like, Big Red. Although Big Red's not really an archetype, I think, in this version of the cube. Five mana. Memory Jar. Okay, we untap. We draw our own Memory Jar. Okay. Uh, play Rafelos. Play Birds. And Skull Clamp and Elvish Mystic. Because I want to draw a land. Okay, we draw a Plow Under. That'll be really funny. Play an Island, pass the turn. Unfortunately, it is not a Swamp or a Greenland. Okay, opponent Memory Jars on our end steps. We lose all of these cards. Opponent attacks with Beaumont Courier. Still no blocks. Okay, we ditch our hands. And we get our other hand back. Okay, we untap. Draw Golgari Signet. 
So Golgar Golgari Signet is worth playing. Then we can play Braids. Okay. Opponent ditches their hand, draws a bunch of cards. So they have an Echo of Eons in the grave. They're going to Mystical Tutor for removal, I think. I mean, depending on what they get and what they do, they still have to sack a permanent, and then we're going to plow under them, <laughs> and then we're going to Hydroid Crisis. So, like, it's looking decent for us right now. If they've got a Pyroclasm, that would be really bad. Uh, I don't know what Pyroclasm effects are in the cube, but I imagine there's at least one. Mizium Mortars. Okay, that's their removal spell for Braids. Um, I could have attacked with their fellow, so I probably should have. So, opponent has to sack something. They sack Workshop. They gotta draw Mortars this turn. They play a Mountain. They're gonna kill Braids. Sure. Then they dash Ragavan. I will absolutely trade Ragavan for Rafelos here. Even though Rafelos has the potential to get us a bunch of mana, we'd have to draw more forests first. And if they're basically out of stuff, Plow Under is a time stretch. <laughs> like a really good time stretch. Alright. We untap. Draw Findhorn Elves. Uh, plow under. We'll say mountain, mountain. Okay. Opponent's next two draws are mountains. Play Findhorn Elves. <sighs> Pass the turn. Okay, opponent untaps, draws a mountain. Plays a mountain. Okay, the Echo of Eons. It's kind of nice. We get a new hand first. And because we drew a swamp, we can actually... Inquisition, Show and Tell, Mind's Desire, Chain Lightning. Um, I think I take Show and Tell, because they can kill a dork, but that doesn't, like, really matter that much. Play Ashiok. Uptick, start exiling. Um, I can Green Sun Zenith for something? What a Green Sun Zenith for? We don't have that many things. I think I still do it, though. Oh, Leovold's pretty good. Yeah, Leovold. Pass the turn. Totally forgot. <laughs> That's absolutely a thing. So they chain lightning Leovold, drawing us a card. They play a mountain. Yeah, I mean, like, there's no way they don't do that. Uh, yes, I would love to draw a card. Thank you. Plow under again? <laughs> oh, thanks for the thanks for the time twist, opponent. <laughs> All right, opponent scoops. Um. They can't beat an active Ashiok, but like we were gonna we were gonna plow under and they like couldn't cast anything. Oh, that's so disgusting. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in round three. Alright. It's not exactly a fast braids, but we do have skull clamp. Um if we draw a swamp off the top, we're good to go. Prismatic Vista is in fact a swamp. Or lead on Elvish Mystic, pass the turn. Opponent plays an island into a signet, okay. We draw Rafelos. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and play Rafelos. Play Birds. This way we can, like, kind of fake that we're mono green. And then, like, next turn we can play Braids. As long as this isn't, like, Tinker for Blightsteel, we might be okay. If it is Tinker for Blightsteel, opponent will have to misclick a Braids trigger <laughs> for us to win. Ashiok. Alright, can't say I'm thrilled. They exile Mana Vault, Inquisition Forest, so they know we are not mono green. We untap. We draw Eternal Witness. So Prismatic Vista, fetch. Get a Swamp. Play Braids. Uh, I could Eternal Witness, or I can... I think I attack Ashiok. Okay. So ta Ashiok takes three. We pass. I'm gonna, I think, actually sack the Swamp here to the Braids trigger. They can't even sack Ashiok. It's Artifact, Creature, or Land. Okay. Opponent sacks an Island. They draw a card. They exile the top however many cards of our deck. Hitting Memory Jar, Signet, Island. They play a Baleful Strix, which lets them draw a card. Okay, they do play a Land. 
They're going to ephemerate Strix. All right. Let's rip a plow under right off the top. That'd be fun. Okay, opponent plays an ever-flowing chalice on zero just for sack fodder. Okay, uh, we are going to sack this swamp. We draw Lanawar Elves. Play Gilded Lotus. Tap for triple green. Eternal Witness. Get back Prismatic Vista. Play Prismatic Vista. Play Skull Clamp. And I don't think we need to play out the Lanawar Elves this turn. Pass the turn. Opponent's going to draw a bunch of cards. Probably just going to sack that Everflowing Chalice. They do. Okay. Ephemerate hits Billful Strix. So, like, Green Sun Zenith would be a great top deck. Um, Plow Under is hilarious. Memory Jar is good. We can just start, like, clamping stuff like Eternal Witness. Oh, Memory Jar is exiled, isn't it? Yep. Okay, opponent plays the Reality Chip. They uptick Ashiok, hitting Whisperwood Elemental and some forests or lands. Yeah, we're going to have to attack Whisperwood Elemental, or we're going to have to attack Ashiok so they don't play Whisperwood Elemental. Um, I am going to go get a island, I think. We untap. We need to sacrifice an artifact, creature, or land. Um, I'm actually going to sack a forest this time, which greatly limits my mana, but... We'll draw Leovold. That's nice. So, play Lanowar Elves. Play Leovold. Clamp the Elf I just played. Draw some cards. Okay. Play a Forest. Play a Rexage. Kill Strix. Go to combat. Swing with everybody at Ashiok. Okay, opponent blocks braids. Ashiok takes four. The Mystical Tutor. So the reason that we killed Strix and not the Signet or the Reality Chip was twofold. One, it was to force them to... Uh, or it was to guarantee that we got damage on Ashiok. The other reason was to force them into a position where they couldn't, like, equip Reality Chip and start gaining value. Unfortunately, they do have Tinker. Um, so that's going to be a pain. Okay. Opponent has to sack. They sack the reality chip. So when they tinker, they're tinkering away Orzov Signet. Okay. Tinker resolves. They get Sphinx of the Steel Wind. So we really need opposition. Otherwise we are going to die to the Sphinx. Uh, yeah, I'd love to draw a card. Thank you. It's a Fintorn Elves. That's not that great. Opponent exiles Green Sun Zenith. Alright, we untap. We are going to sacrifice a forest. We draw another forest, so play a forest. Clamp Elvish Mystic. I think... no, 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 no. Clamp Elvish Mystic. See what we draw. Because if we can draw Plow Under, we can actually put them in a situation, I think, where they're going to have to sack Sphinx. Um... Hydroid Krasis. Uh, Krasis is good. We need to attack down Ashiok, which means we have to swing with three two-power creatures that aren't braids. So Eternal Witness, Rafelos, and Rexage are going in. Okay, they're going to kill Rafelos. They lose Ashiok. Play a Krasis. Gain some life. Draw a couple cards. Play a Findhorn Elves. Pass the turn. Opponent has to sack a land. If they miss a land drop, we plow under and then just win. Okay, we sack a Rexage here. Get Deranged Hermit. So, plow under. Play Blooming Marsh. Pass the turn. Oh, Braids is so awesome! All right, go ahead and sacrifice an artifact creature or land. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we got Sphinx of the Steel Wind out of the way. <clears throat> now they just play lands and sack them to braids, and we have to try and attack them to death. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and sack 
Blooming Marsh. We draw Chupacabra. Play Deranged Hermit. That'll put a lot of power on board. Go to combat. Attack for a lot. We have four turns to win in. Yeah, that's plenty. Okay, opponent sacks nothing. Opponent passes. We untap. Uh, we will pay the echo cost. Oh, whoops. I'm tapping too much for that. Sack a forest. Draw position. Go to combat. Attack with everybody. <laughs> yeah, buddy! <laughs> we got there. <laughs> Hope I didn't reveal hand. <clears throat> Alright, um... Yeah, run it back. Man, we could really hard lock them with the uh, Lodestone Golem, but they've got Signets. So I don't actually think that's a good idea. does feel like we're lacking a slight amount of top end, but this deck is sweet. Even if it's bad, it's awesome. As uh, I think Caleb Gannon would say, my deck is perfect. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we've got some fast green stuff. I'm absolutely going to keep this. We're probably getting a forest off Prismatic Vista so we can cast um, stuff with Rafelos. Or we can just draw a forest. That works. Play a forest, pass the turn. Opponent sacks Misty for a Tundra. They untap. They play a Hollowed Fountain. Tapped. Okay. We draw Zagoth Triome. That does make our lives easier. Play a forest. Rafelos. Pass the turn. And like next turn we have like Plow Under or Whisperwood Elemental. Opponent plays a Polluted Delta. They fetch for a Swamp. And they play Ashiok. They uptick, exiling land, opposition land. We untap and draw Green Sun Zenith. It's like a Green Sun X4, but like, I think Whisperwood Elemental is just better. Unless they daze. So play Zagoth Triome. I could play around Days by playing Grim Monolith. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Because we're not going to need the Mana Acceleration off Grim Monolith. Okay. And this is like a you-must-answer-this-immediately type threat, so... Whisperwood's going to manifest a Ravenous Chupacabra. Hmm. Metamorph? Yep. Rexian Metamorph, so they're going to copy Whisperwood Elemental. Luckily, we have Reclamation Sage, so we can just Rex Sage the Whisperwood Elemental. Uh, they exile Skull Clamp and Deranged Hermit. I mean, us losing Deranged Hermit's kind of bad. Okay, we untap. We draw our own Ashiok. So, Reclamation Sage. Take out Whisperwood Elemental. Play our own Ashiok. Start milling them. Solitude is nice. Um, then we attack Ashiok, attack Ashiok. So then we can mill them next turn and plow under to set them behind. The opponent's going to chump. We get to manifest an island. Opponent manifested an island as well. Oh, I should not be auto-yielded because I might need to activate Whisperwood Elemental in response to like a wrath. Okay, opponent is putting Deranged Hermit onto the board to make a bunch of tokens. They will not be able to pay the echo cost, and these tokens do not really represent a threat to us at all. They play a Signet. I mean, they can tinker if they've got it, but we untap. We draw a Gilded Lotus. So first things first, uptick on our opponent. We exile Worn Power Stone Concealed Courtyard Island. Um, yeah, let's, uh, Let's plow under. Mystical Tutor. <laughs> They're gonna put a card underneath both lands. <laughs> <It's just laughs> okay, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm gonna mill it with Ashiok next turn. Ephemerate Deranged Hermit. That's... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll take the Ephemerate. I mean, literacy is hard even for me, so it's, you know, it's cool. <clears throat> uh, we'll pass. Manifest a card. Opponent untaps. Ephemerate rebounds. They decide not to cast it, interestingly enough. They play a Tundra, so they have a Hollowed Fountain on top of their deck into a Tinker. We have a massive board, and we go 2-1. Oh, what an excellent finish. That deck was sweet. 
wasn't really an archetype, but it was totally worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch. Same username over there as you find me on here. I have a link to my Discord, Patreon in the description down below. Uh, Discord is the best way to contact me. Patreon, I think, is the best way to support me if you want to support me directly. And um, you're all wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you.